Hi everyone! Welcome to today's YouTube video. I'm really excited. I've been preparing for the past few days on this video and we actually announced to everybody that we'd be doing a lot more YouTube videos this year and asked you all what kinds of videos that you wanted to see. In the comments and in our responses, we got a lot of responses all about asking us to make ink videos, you know, all about fountain pen inks and asking us to recommend some of our favorite inks. So really excited to announce that today's YouTube video is going to be an introduction on fountain pen inks. And I'm happy to be talking about this topic because fountain pen inks are definitely one of my personal favorite things when it comes to fountain pens. I love the world of colors that opens up to me when you're talking about fountain pen ink bottles and what you can use. But definitely one of the most common questions that I get in the store on a daily basis whenever I'm in the store is somebody coming up to me and asking me, you know, I have a fountain pen and what kind of fountain pen ink can I use in my fountain pen? And the answer is pretty simple. I will give you the short answer, which is that pretty much any kind of fountain pen ink is usable in a fountain pen. As long as you're using a fountain pen ink, it is most likely going to be safe in your fountain pen with some exceptions of like some fountain pen inks requiring a little bit more maintenance to your fountain pen. But generally speaking, any fountain pen ink will work in any fountain pen. What you do wanna stay away from for fountain pens where you're putting the ink into the body of the pen is things like walnut ink, drawing ink, and India ink, and things like that where you would really mainly be using dip pens for. So you want to look for an ink that says fountain pen ink when you're thinking about inks for your fountain pen. And that's the short answer, but you'll see that there's a lot more information that I'm excited to give you all, which is why this video does not just end here. Um, so today's video is going to be covering the topics of cartridges versus ink bottles, because those are kind of the two main ways you find fountain pen ink. And then once that's established, we'll be talking about the different types of fountain pen ink. So there's pigment ink and there's dye based ink and there's other types of ink and we'll be talking briefly about what makes those different from one another. And then we'll be moving on to different qualities and properties of fountain pen ink. You've probably heard these terms if you've ever done a search on fountain pen inks. There are sheening inks and shading inks and shimmering inks. And this kind of describes the way that a fountain pen ink color looks once it's on paper. So those are the qualities of a fountain pen ink that you might look for or you might not look for. If you Some people like them, some people don't. Um, and then we'll be talking a little bit about what affects these qualities of fountain pen inks because we can't really talk about fountain pen inks without really addressing the kind of paper that you're writing on and the kind of fountain pen nib that you're using. So we'll touch on those briefly as well. But without further ado, let's dive into fountain pen inks. If you have a fountain pen, you very likely have a box of one of these. These are cartridges and inside these comes maybe five, six, 12 little plastic vials of pre-sealed ink. And that is definitely one of the most kind of common ways to use a fountain pen and to ink up your fountain pen is with a cartridge like this. And I'll give everyone a little bit of a closer up look at what a fountain pen cartridge looks like. So these are fountain pen cartridges from some of the most popular fountain pen producers, I would say manufacturers. We have Lamy, we have Sailor, Pilot, Platinum, and this is Kaweco. And then we also have this one from Urban. So this here is what a fountain pen ink cartridge looks like. As I was saying before, it is just a little plastic sealed up vial of fountain pen ink and you puncture a hole into it with your fountain pen as you're inserting it into your fountain pen to make the ink go down to the tip of the fountain pen when you're writing with it. And that's what a fountain pen ink cartridge looks like. So if you're choosing between different fountain pen ink cartridges, one of the most important questions that you have to answer is what brand is your fountain pen? Because the 
Cartridge really depends on what brand it is. Some brands like Pilot, Sailor, Platinum, Lamy, you have to use a cartridge that is produced by that company because it only fits that size. And then there are some cartridges, what are called standard international, such as these guys. And some fountain pens will say that they are standard international size. So you can use these standard international cartridges with them. But if you have one fountain pen that's brand specific, then you'll need to use cartridges only from that brand. And moving on, fountain pen ink can also come in, maybe you've seen these, these beautiful bottles that I personally love. <laughs> and they're usually like, you know, anywhere from 20 to this one's like a 50 milliliter bottle of just liquid ink. And you can use these with your fountain pen too, but you need something called a fountain pen ink converter. So fountain pen ink converters look mostly like this. They work in a number of different ways. And I have a few of the most common ones in front of me here. This is a Pilot on 70. This is a Lamy converter. This one is a Kaweco converter. Uh, this one is another Kaweco converter. And this is another Pilot converter called the Con 40. So so they work pretty easy. Some of them you twist like this to lower this thing called the piston and to draw up the ink or expel the ink from the pen. Um, some of them, this one is the Con 70 from Pilot, some of them are pump like this. So this one you just push down and it pumps and sucks up the ink from the bottle. And another one, this is the Kaweco Mini Converter Sport. This one actually works like this. You just actually pull on it instead of twisting it or pulling it or pushing it to suck the ink up from the bottle. So this one is a really easy and effective way of getting ink into a pen too. But if you're thinking about using a bottle of ink, the same question that you have to answer is, what brand is your fountain pen? Because just like the cartridges, if you have a fountain pen from Pilot, from Lamy, from Sailor, from Platinum, you'll have to use a converter that is only made from that company. So you have to use a Lamy converter if you have a Lamy, and you have to use a Pilot converter if you have Pilot, and you use it with a bottle of ink like this to draw ink into your fountain pen. And that's just the basics. Okay, so now you have a little bit information about cartridges of ink versus bottles of ink, and you wanna decide between a cartridge of ink or a bottle of ink. You know, what makes you, what makes you go with these little plastic cartridges versus a big bottle of ink like this? And I would say that there's a few differences to keep in mind. The cartridges are definitely a lower cost up front. You can usually get a pack of six or a pack of 12 for under $10 and this will last you, depending on how long you write, one cartridge of ink could last you a day or it could last you a month. It really depends on how much you write. But you can also get a big bottle of ink like this which the cost is a little bit more upfront with your fountain pen. Plus you need to get what we talked about before, a converter. So it depends on how much you're willing to spend on your fountain pen right away. But also the color options when you're looking at cartridges are a lot more restricted than when you are thinking about ink from a bottle because there are probably thousands of different ink bottles to choose from with lots of different ink properties and so many different colors, as many different colors as you can choose from. And the options for colors when you're thinking about cartridges are just not as fun, I would say. So if you are deep into the fountain pen world and you're sick of writing in the basic black and blue and then you want to really think about exploring different colors and different properties of ink, then you're going to be looking at making an investment into a bottle of ink, which in the long run is actually going to probably save you money because this is a lot of ink to go through. Okay. 
Next up, we are going to be talking about some different types of ink, and this has to do with what the ink is made out of, the composition of the ink. The first type of ink, then the main type of ink that covers most inks, I would say, is dye-based inks, and that's these bottles here, like Pilot Iroshizuku, Diamine, Sailor Ink Studio. These are some of our favorite dye-based inks. Here are some of the bottles that I just mentioned. This is Pilot Iroshizuku, this is Diamine, and this is Sailor Ink Studio 123. These are just examples that I chose. But dye-based inks are mainly composed of water, as all inks are, and they get their color from dyes. So what this this means is that the fountain pen ink, when it dries, is not waterproof at all. It's water soluble, so if you were to get your notebook wet and you were only using dye-based inks, it would bleed and the writing would kind of wash away. <laughs> so if that's something that concerns you, which I know some people are really into having all of their notebooks archival, then dye-based inks might not be for you. However, I think that there are definitely more colors to choose from if you're looking at dye-based inks versus the waterproof inks that we're going to talk about later, but that's dye-based inks. Okay, next up, after dye-based inks, we have pigment inks, and these two bottles here are some of my favorite pigment inks. This is Kakimori, and this is Lenin Toolbar Atmospheric. And I'll show you a little close-up of the bottles here. So Kakimori is known for making these really adorable bottles, but I guess we're talking about the inside of the bottle. So this ink is a pigment-based ink, as is this Lenin Toolbar ink. And you can see here, it has a different look. Okay, I can tell right away, it has a different look than the dye-based inks. This one just has more opacity to it, whereas the dye-based inks are a little bit more transparent. They look kind of like clear juice as opposed to a juice with pulp, I guess. So pigment ink is actually made primarily of water. All inks are primarily made of water, but also they get their color from little particles of pigment. So that is what gives pigment inks the property of being completely waterproof or water resistant sometimes. Some are better than others, and we'll take a look and see how waterproof some of these inks actually are. But that is one thing about pigment inks. The main thing that differs from pigment inks and dye-based inks is that pigment inks are waterproof. And because pigment inks are waterproof, they are actually going to be a little bit more high maintenance in your fountain pen if you're inking it up in your converter and your fountain pen, then pigment inks are something that you want to wash out of your fountain pen and flush it out with water. I would say at least once every two to three weeks and make sure that the pigment ink does not dry up in your fountain pen. So if you're somebody who you know writes with your fountain pen very, very often for like two days and then leaves it in their desk for <laughs> another like three weeks, I would say pigment inks maybe not the best choice for you unless you know you're gonna be really good about cleaning them out of your fountain pen before leaving them in your drawer. You don't want these to dry up in your fountain pen because it could clog up the feed and give it some flow issues later on. So that's pigment inks and I do have, this is Kakimori number no. 4 Karari and Lenin Toolbar Atmospheric Firmament. I do have writing samples of them. So here are the samples that I prepared of the Lenin Toolbar Atmospheric ink and the Kakimori Potari ink. And these are both pigment inks, which as you all know now means they're waterproof. So I thought I would take a little water brush and just run over the color on them to see how waterproof they are. This is just a water brush. It's quite saturated with water. And I'm just running through. Yeah, that is, as you can see, the paper is getting wrinkled because it's just thin Tomoe River paper, but the color has stayed completely and the words have not smeared. So that's a pretty good test of how waterproof these inks really are. So pigment inks truly are waterproof. Okay, so after pigment inks, I thought I would talk about iron gall inks. Iron gall inks, similar to pigment inks, are also waterproof inks. 
So they're not dye based and they're not pigment based though. They are iron gall, which means they have been made with oak gall and iron salts, which give them permanence over time and resistance to water. And what's cool about iron gall inks is that they have a quality of darkening over time. And in the minutes after you write, as the ink is drying, it becomes darker and darker as it oxidizes. So here in front of me, I have two bottles. This is Tools to Live by Fountain Pen Ink in their signature beautiful bottle. What's in here is actually KWZ ink, which is an iron gall ink. And this is Lavender Black Platinum Classic. And to demonstrate the quality that iron gall inks have of darkening over time, I thought I would demonstrate this one is a sample that I wrote yesterday. So this has had some time to darken and I'll just write again next to it to, to show you all how, how much lighter it is when it first goes on paper. Okay, so I'm just using our Kakimori brass nib. And there you go. You can see here it's like a raspberry, like lighter color. And as it dries, it gets to be this darker sort of maroon color. Even now, actually, in the seconds after I've written this, it is darkening. That's really cool. So one thing I will warn you about iron gall inks is that they've been known to corrode stainless steel nibs. So you also should not leave these inked up in your stainless steel fountain pens for too long, but gold nibs are actually okay. All right. So moving on, we talked about some of the different types of fountain pen ink and type of fountain pen ink really has to do with what is inside the ink and whether it is waterproof or not. And there are other types of fountain pen inks. Like I know, for example, Noodlers makes a bulletproof ink and they make all of these different experimental types of inks that are really cool. But these three, I think pigment, dye, and iron gall are the three types of fountain pen inks that lots of different companies make and it'll cover 90% of fountain pen inks that you are researching in a bottle at least. Okay, moving on, I'm so excited to be talking about some of the different qualities of fountain pen inks and these are shading, sheening, and shimmering inks. I think that this is where fountain pen ink fun really happens <laughs> for me. I know this might be like a divisive topic and some people might disagree. I've definitely spoken to people in the store who don't like shading inks at all and personally I love shading inks but without going further into it, let me tell you a little bit about what shading inks are. So shading inks are inks that have a quality of appearing to be different colors, some lighter, some darker, depending on where the ink is pooling on the paper on your stroke as the ink has dried and as you're writing with it. And that's what shading is. So a lot of the time shading occurs on the same color. So if there's a gray ink, it might shade really light gray and then it might shade really dark gray. But recently, in recent years, we've actually seen some companies like Sailor and Dominant Industry and then a lot of other companies actually know Troublemaker, Colorverse, like a lot of fountain pen inks have been including this quality of shading into multiple colors, which is really cool. And that is something that I love in a fountain pen ink. And I know some people, I was saying before, don't love it because it's kind of unpredictable. You don't know, you don't know what the fountain pen ink is going to look like when you're writing with it. And that could be a little stressful um, if you're writing an important letter or some document that you need. So I have some examples here of shading inks that I am excited to show you all. So here I have prepared a little swatch of some of our top shading inks. This one is Pilot Iroshizuku Kirisame in this bottle here. You'll see me talking a lot about Pilot Iroshizuku in this video because it really is one of my favorite inks. It's a very well-behaved ink. Every ink from Iroshizuku is a very well-behaved ink and it has never given me any problems. It's very flowing out of your pen, so I, I, I do recommend. So. Pilot Iroshizuku Kirisame is a shading ink and you can see 
Um, this is one that I was talking about before where it shades. It does shade dark gray and then it shades light gray like at the end of the stroke over here depending on where the ink really pools in your stroke. And then these inks, these three inks are some of our most popular inks I would say and these have much more dramatic shading properties. This is what I was talking about where one color of ink really shades three or four different colors. So Sailor Yurimeku Kyoko is this bottle over here and you can see it's so fascinating because here it's one color and then here at the end where I'm guessing the ink pooled more it's shading this was like light gray purple and now it's like pink and dark blue and that's what's really cool about these shading inks is that you just don't know what you're gonna get and it makes it really interesting as you're writing. The next color that I wanna talk about that's a shading ink is Sailor Manyo Neko Yanagi. This is definitely one of our top shading inks that I always recommend. If somebody's asking me what is shading, I might just take out a bottle of Neko Yanagi to show them because it's such a prime example of shading. It is one that shades dark blue and bright purple, light lavender, all the different shades of like blues, purples, and pinks that are so pretty. The next one is Sailor Ink Studio 123, and you can see this one is also shading lots of different colors. It goes on dark gray, it shades blue, it shades light purple. It is a gorgeous one, and that's what shading is, and that's what shading means. And these are some of our favorite shading inks. So next up after shading inks is another really popular property that some people really love. And I actually haven't spoken to anybody who hates this property. So I don't know if you're somebody out there who's like, I hate it, let me know. <laughs> but I'm talking about sheening. So sheening is a quality of ink where once it dries, it develops a metallic luster on the surface of the paper. And it's really, really cool. Sheening is actually so cool <laughs> and I have prepared some of our favorite sheening inks and these are such good examples of sheening so Ink Institute Jadeite which is this bottle here in front of me made by Ink Institute they they sought out to create a highly sheening ink and they totally did it <laughs> this ink I have you have to hold it in the light because it is like metallic as I was saying but you can see it here it is a dark green ink that as it reflects in the light depending on the angle that you're holding it it sheens red and it's gorgeous I love it the next shading ink is Pilot Iroshizuku Yamabudo. I don't have the bottle here in front of me, but it's Pilot Iroshizuku again. And it is a plum purple ink. And the sheening on this one is a little bit more subtle before these like monster sheeners <laughs> came. But this one, this one sheens like a little bit green depending on where you're looking. And I'll try to find light, yeah. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea. And this is Tomoe River paper for anybody who's wondering, which really, really, um, if you're a fan of sheen, you need to get this paper because it really helps the sheen shine. Okay, next up is J. Urban Anniversary Emerald of Shavor. This is actually a sheening and a shimmer ink, but the sheening is really what you can see. This ink is green. It's a little bit of a lighter green than the jadeite, and this ink also sheens red. Like, yeah. Hopefully you can see that. It looks so pretty. This is really... This Emerald of Shavor is definitely one of the all-time most popular inks. So yeah, definitely one to try. The Emerald of Shavor is definitely one of like the all-time most popular inks in the store. People ask about it all the time. And if you haven't heard of it, I would recommend picking up a sample of it at least just so, just so you can see what the fuss is all about. It really is pretty cool to see how much this one sheens. Next up, we're gonna be talking about shimmer inks. So shimmering, I think shimmering could be confused with sheening because the result of it looks kind of the same, but they actually come from really different reasons. So sheen, as we all know now, is the metallic luster on the surface of the, the ink as it dries, but 
shimmer is actually um, glitter, like a glittering ink that results from tiny glitter particles of different colors that have been suspended or it just like put into the bottle of ink. So you can put gold particles, you can put silver, you can put red, any, any kind of like glitter color you can think of, you can actually add that into a fountain pen ink and make it a shimmer ink. So that is where it differs from sheening inks, even though the results might be sort of similar visually. Okay, so here I have a couple of our favorite shimmery inks or definitely ones that I love a lot. Um, this one is Dominant Industry Autumn Forest number 11 and you'll see shimmer inks this is the glitter particles that I was talking about. So this one you can see has like a red bronze glitter particles in the bottle. And what you have to do when you are using the bottle is you actually have to give it a little bit of a shake. You actually do have to shake it a lot more aggressively than what I just demonstrated. You have to give it a real good shake to make sure all the glitter particles are like flying around in the ink bottle to make sure that when you're inking your pen up, you're actually getting those glitter particles. Otherwise, they won't really come through when you're writing. This is Autumn Forest number 11 from Dominant Industry. And Shimmer is one that can be hard to capture. It comes out a lot more in these big ink blobs, I would say, than in, in the writing. So Shimmer can be subtle. That's the thing about Shimmer. But you can see here, like this is absolutely gorgeous. Autumn Forest and such a good name for it too. And then this other one is Stormy Gray, which is a gray ink, J Urban Anniversary. And it has like a silver gold shimmer particles in it. So yeah, it's kind of hard to see shimmer in your writing. You have to really look up close to see it, but you can see it in these blobs. Okay, so we know a little bit about shimmering inks now, and one thing I'll tell you about shimmering inks is that you're talking about working with physical glitter particles in the ink. So what can happen sometimes if the particles of glitter are too big and your fountain pen nib is very, very fine, um, is that your fountain pen can get clogged and it just will stop writing completely if you have inked up with a shimmer ink. So I usually caution people in the store when they're looking at a shimmer ink, I usually ask them if they have like a medium nib or a broad nib this doesn't happen with every single shimmer. I was writing with some of these shimmer inks in a fine fountain pen and I actually didn't have any issues, but it really depends on the size of the glitter particles. So just to be safe, I usually recommend that you use a medium, a broad, or a stub nib with any shimmer ink. And that's just what I recommend. And I would definitely say that if you have a gold nib, like an extra fine gold nib, take caution with your shimmer inks. <laughs> um, maybe get a steel nib, maybe get a pen that you can take apart really easily so you can wash it out and flush it out really well just in case. So that's something you need to know about shimmering inks. All right, so now we've talked about cartridges of ink and bottles of ink and we are talking about, we've talked about the different types of ink pigment, dye-based, and uh, iron gall, and we're, we've talked about the qualities of ink, shimmering, sheening, and shading, and you really can't talk about the qualities of ink without at least addressing and thinking about the type of paper and the pen that you're using, because some papers have been known to really exaggerate the shading and the sheening of inks. And the thicker your nib is, the more you'll be able to see these qualities of inks really come through in your writing. So I'll give you an example. In order to illustrate this point, I have actually tested out shade, a shading, a shimmering, a sheening, and a standard ink on six different types of paper with three different pens. I used a Kakuno Fine Nib, a Twisby Medium Nib, and a Dip Pen so that we can see all of the different possibilities of pen and ink and quality and see what the best result is. 
So I have some conclusions to share and I'm really excited, but um, let me first give you a little look at what I'm looking at over here. So you're all probably wondering, any paper nerds out there, and I'm a paper nerd, so I'm allowed to say nerd, <laughs> Any paper nerds out there will be asking what what types of paper I did this testing on. So the six different types of paper are Astology Editor Series. This is a really popular notebook and there's a lot of discussion about how fountain pen friendly it is, so I thought I would test it out. Maruma Nemesine, Rhodia, Tomoe River 52 GSM, MD Paper, and Life. So I tested on these six different types of paper, a shading ink, a shimmer ink, a sheening ink, and a very standard ink just for a baseline. And I used three different pens. I used the Kakuno Fine Nib, which is this one over here. This is a Japanese fine nib, so you know it's fine. And I used a Twisby Medium. It uses a, a European nib, even though it's a Taiwanese company, so you know it's broad. And then I used a glass dip pen, this guy, the Fonte glass dip pen, as a dip pen. And generally speaking, when you are writing with a thicker pen, no matter what, the ink properties are going to come through more. And that has been established in my testing, but I think that's, that's also established in the community as well. If you just fell in love with shading and sheening by looking at these samples just now in my video, you want to think about getting maybe a Twisby Medium because it really does show off those inks the best. All right. So the shading ink that we use to test out, I used Ink Institute Electric Blue Spider Lily on all of these different papers. So this is it on Life paper, this is it on MD paper, on Stology paper, on the Marmon paper, Rhodia, and Tomoe River. Tomoe River, for those who don't know, is a uh, has been really embraced in the fountain pen community for its abilities to bring out these beautiful fountain pen ink qualities that we talk about. But this is my result, and you can see it's interesting. It's interesting because actually, in this electric blue spider lily, it is consistently more shading across the medium nibs and the dip nibs versus the fine. So I'll show you, for example, on the Life paper, this is a Twisby medium versus a Kakuno fine. You can immediately see the difference on the Twisby medium versus the Kakuno fine where you really can't see very much shading at all. And you see it more in the dip pen too, but mostly you see it in the medium nib, which is interesting. One conclusion that I made, and you can see here generally in this overview of the shading ink, is that if you're using an ink that shades very, very well and is guaranteed to shade very, very well, such as Ink Institute Electric Blue Spider Lily, and probably such as those other shading inks that I was talking about before, all of these, it doesn't actually matter too, too much what kind of paper you're using because this kind of ink really shades well across all six different papers. However, um, I wanted to also see what shading would look like on a standard ink such as Pilot Iroshizuku Fuyugaki across these six different papers. So here I tested Pilot Iroshizuku Fuyugaki, which doesn't shade a ton, but this is kind of where you want to look at. Um, you want to look for an ink that doesn't shade a ton to see which paper brings out the shading the most. And as a result, I found that the shading on the Tomoe River was actually the most exaggerated. So this is like a not shading ink, yet on the dip pen using Tomoe River paper, you actually do get a little bit of shading. It's kind of subtle, but you actually do get it here. And it comes through on the life paper as well. Very subtle. And it also comes through on the Maruman Nemesine paper, but it's also subtle. But you can see, for example, the difference between like this stroke at the end, which is really dark, and then the stroke here in the middle, which is a little bit lighter. 
So my conclusion is that if you have fallen in love with shading inks and you're using a highly shading ink, it doesn't matter too, too much what kind of paper you're using as long as it's a fountain pen friendly paper. But if you want to use a standard ink and bring out shading qualities in your standard ink with your paper, you should use Tomoe River paper, you should use Life paper, and you should use Maruman Nemesine paper. Okay, so let's look at some of the sheening inks that I tested out on these six papers. So here we are again. So the sheening ink that I actually tested was, you can see sheening, this is the Rhodia. Sheening was Sailor Manyo Ume. But what I found was most sheening was actually, it happened to be this shimmer ink that I was testing. And it was actually this dominant industry pearl number 19. That turned out to be like an insane sheener. That is sheening. So it's a blue ink that sheens red. And it is so beautiful the way it sheens. And my top sheening papers after all of this testing were Life. You can see the sheening on the dominant industry right here. Hopefully that comes through and if not, we'll get another shot of it. But that is blue and it's sheening red and it's really actually, it is insanely sheen friendly. Sheen friendly paper over here. So I love Life to exaggerate the sheen. Tomoe River is obviously a great one. Okay. Okay. And also actually MD paper. So MD paper was, um, even though MD is like really not coated, it shows sheen really well, even for, even for this moderately sheen ink, Ume, it was sheening on. Um, and then I had some kind of like not so good papers for sheening. So if you're a really big fan of sheen, I found that Rhodia paper really flattened sheen out. Even in even in like a monster sheener like the Dominant Industry number 19 lapis lazuli, it really took all the sheen out of it and I was really surprised. So this is the Rhodia here and you can look for the number 19 Dominant Industry and the sheen just disappeared. It just it just evaporated. So if you love sheen, I hate to tell you this, not, Rhodia is not sheen friendly. Don't use Rhodia. So that is, I guess, my findings for shading and sheening inks. And then interestingly, or not so interestingly, I guess this is like a hindsight bias thing, but in my testing, I realized that shimmer inks show up equally well and across like all different papers, but the thicker fountain pens showed the shimmering inks the best. So this isn't too surprising because shimmer ink is actually like physical particles of glitter that are suspended in the ink. So they're definitely there and I don't think the paper really affects how well it comes out that much, but what does affect it is the nib size you're using. So if you're liking shimmer inks, use a medium nib, use a dip pen to really show off your shimmer inks and make sure you like shake the bottle for shimmering inks. Okay, so there you have it. That was our introduction to fountain pen inks video. I really hope you all enjoyed it. I think I learned a lot about this video and personally my favorite inks are shading and I love sheening inks too, but let me know in the comments about your thoughts on shading and sheening inks. I hope you all learned a lot from the video. So if you have any questions, if I missed any information, and I also wanna give a shout out to Kelly over at Mountain of Ink. She has an amazing blog. If you can tell from the name, it's all about ink. And she has probably cataloged almost every ink color that I can think of. So check out her blog if you have questions about a particular ink color that you wanna see swatched out. And she actually also has listed out the shading and the sheening qualities for a particular ink color. So check out Kelly's blog, Mountain of Ink, if you have any questions about ink, she's an amazing resource, her blog is. Um, or you can always ask us too, if we have any inks that you have questions about, we're always happy to swatch them out and answer any questions you have. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to lots more videos like this. Bye.